but let me tell you why they were yellow. Because we knew we needed some paper because we were making bulletin boards and things like that, but we knew we needed some paper so we could put the adhesive on the paper and stick it to anything. So I needed some paper. So here's my laboratory. I crossed the corridor and on the other side, I knew they had some paper. So I went and said, do you guys have any paper? And they said, yeah, we've got some scrap yellow paper. It's yellow. Is that okay? And I said, sure. Later, you can explain it. You can say to people, you know, it stands out um, and it's, it's not too bright, but it, it's just, you know, it grabs your attention. But still the most popular post-it notes we sell today are yellow. And that's kind of interesting, you know, because it was a sh sheer accident. Innovation is doing something about it. Not exp you know, a lot of people have an idea and they expect somebody else to work on it. Maybe they're afraid of failure, you see. Maybe they don't want to work on it because they'll become associated with a failure. But the fact of the matter is, the person who has that idea should have the passion to do something about it. And, and I think in the area of innovation, what happens is, you know, you have these accidents. When they discovered penicillin, it was an accident. You have these accidents but it's so easy to throw them away and forget about it. But you have to see, gee whiz, what happened there? Why did it happen? Fundamentally, you have to be curious because curiosity is the thing. The best innovators are very, you know, how does this work? How does this work? Now, the challenge is you're correct. In small, medium-sized company, they get so tied up they forget their beginnings. They forget that they were an innovative company. And if they intend to be a continuing growing company, they have to commit to innovation. They have to say, we have, we have to create our future. If they don't create their own future, somebody else will do it for them and take the business away. And I think you heard today of the several programs where Singapore is in the lead. We have, 3M has decided to really focus on some laboratory, provide the resources so that they can not only provide support to Singapore, but also surprise, provide support for other countries, other 3M companies. And that's a good thing because as you manufacture product here, then you get to export it around the Asia world or wherever, actually. What I'd just add is this country has got an outstanding capability in research. They're doing some outstanding research, particularly in the healthcare and the medical area. The challenge is to do that second part of that equation, and that is transfer that knowledge into money. And it's, it's difficult, it's filled with risk, but if you're afraid, then I suggest you don't do innovation because for one reason or another, you'll stop. You'll stop working on it. You'll not have the enthusiasm. You'll not have the passion to work on it. It's very difficult sometimes for anybody, I don't care whether they're Americans or Singapore, to think outside the box. They are comfortable within the box. They are comfortable within the current environment. And you're trying to do something which is outside of that environment. And it has risk. And as I say, uh, if you're afraid, this is a, this is, you have to have courage. That's one of the, the words you probably heard me say, talk about several times. Courage is essential. I mean, for when I was told to kill post-it notes, it took a lot of courage to basically say to my boss, yes, and then just keep on doing it, right? But that's the kind of culture. And I think it's a challenge, but I think I see in this laboratory, they understand what we, they, they have absorbed the culture and so this, com this company will do it. The challenge, as you said, is in these many companies that you have who are satisfied with the status quo or who are, instead of working on the next generation of product, they continuously work on price reduction. It's not that cost reduction isn't important, but you have to have a balance between creating the future and living in the past. I'm a gadget guy though, you know, I mean, but I have to, you know, 
I, I like the, the, the latest GPS mission, you know, so that I don't get lost. <laughs> yeah. And uh, I usually end up with the iPhone. Um, so as soon as they introduce a new model, I don't go stand at the shop and wait for it. But, you know, within about two or three weeks, my wife says, come on, you've already got a phone. Why do you want another one? I said, this is a better one.